Jennifer's body is underrated in so many ways, and a main one is the costume design. Dressing an evil boy-eating demon in cute, girly clothing is strategic. You may not have realized it, but the fashion significantly elevates this story's dark message. Jennifer's body is about, well, Jennifer's body. How her body is objectified, judged, used, sacrificed, possessed, weaponized, and ultimately destroyed. Since so much focus is on her body, how she's dressed is telling. Her outfits affect how she's perceived, reveal her toxic personality traits, remind us of her victimhood, and reflect her dynamic with her best friend. Jennifer's body was panned when it first came out in 2009. The studio ironically capitalized on Megan Fox's looks, or her body, and marketed the movie to teen boys rather than the female audience it was made for. I won't go into that too much in this video, but I will link some great videos in the description if you're interested in hearing more about that story. In recent years, the movie has gained a cult following. I want to add to this appreciation by showcasing why its aesthetic is so iconic and more importantly, how it makes the movie stronger. Jennifer Check is an attractive, highly confident, but manipulative teenager. When the devil-worshipping band Low Shoulder sacrifices her to gain fame and success, she's reborn as a demon who eats boys to sustain herself. Jennifer's style consists of low-rise jeans, low-cut tops, and pink. It's feminine and consistent to the trends of the mid-2000s when this movie was made. While it's set in a small Midwest town, the costume designer Katty Astano wanted to give her a unique edge, so her style is inspired by Japanese street fashion with leg warmers, micro skirts, and animal keychains. You don't really see these animal keychains much in the movie, but I do think they're such a cute detail. Typical in high school fashion, Jennifer is introduced as a cheerleader. Sort of. She's holding a flag here, so I'm pretty sure she's on the flag team. She also has drill team shoes on, so this look is actually kind of confusing. I'm just gonna go with cheerleader because this is a cheerleading uniform, and that's what's on IMDb. In high school movies, cheerleaders are often synonymous with teen popularity and status. It's no different for Jennifer. This is essential to contrast Needy, the protagonist, and Jennifer's best friend since childhood. Jennifer is attractive and athletic. Needy describes herself as dorky. Visually, we can already understand their power dynamic. Jennifer loves the spotlight. Needy cheers on the sidelines. Cheerleaders can also be a sex symbol, which Jennifer is often portrayed as. Her uniform is form-fitting with a micro skirt. Interestingly though, the top is long-sleeved and not cropped. It's a considerably less sexy outfit than what they could have chosen given all the other short tops she wears in this movie. I don't know if this was intentional or if they chose this as a more realistic outfit for high school cheerleading, but this is a great example of how Jennifer isn't overly sexualized in her clothing. We'll see this throughout the movie with Jennifer wearing sexy outfits, but they're never hyper-sexualized or unrealistic. The clothing is still casual and it makes her feel more like an authentic teenager. What's even more interesting is that this outfit is sexier for the promotional material. Jennifer never once wears this uniform in the movie, and this all goes back to the horrors of the marketing campaign. Jennifer's cheerleading doesn't have much relevance to the plot other than establishing her popularity in contrast to Needy. There is only one notable time it's brought up again, and I'll touch on that later. Jennifer's clothing has sex appeal, and she knows it. Before and after her assault, she's empowered by her body. She uses clothing to weaponize herself to get what she wants. She wears citizen jeans because this brand had the lowest rise at the time, making her outfits more seductive. Low-cut tops are her signature since she believes her chest is a weapon. She uses her cleavage to get drinks while underage and later to lure her prey. When hunting boys, Jennifer wears layers and easy to remove clothing. Removing layers is sensual and a distraction. Jennifer likes to toy with her food first, exciting the boys just enough before ripping it away and denying them her body. Staying clothed is a cathartic form of vengeance. Jennifer takes revenge on boys the same way she was taken advantage of by the band, luring the vulnerable, promising safety, and then massacring them. What's sad is that Jennifer's source of power is also her weakness. Before her assault, Jennifer is keenly aware of the effect she has, even encourages it, but she's bored. She's bored of boys constantly hitting on her and of the same boys. Simply by showing her chest, they easily fall at her feet, and she thinks they're pathetic. She wants someone on her level, new and exciting. When she meets Nikolai, 
the singer from the city, she's giddy like the teenage girl she is. However, what made Jennifer so powerful a few minutes ago, her looks paired with her clothing, instantly makes her a target. Nikolai assumes she's a virgin because she likes to, quote, show it off and never give it up, which isn't accurate. While Jennifer does like to show off, she's no virgin. Clothing can indicate elements of a personality, but you can't judge someone so definitively based on it. The band does get false confirmation from Needy and Jennifer that she's a virgin, but it's their initial assessment that makes her a target in the first place. Jennifer becomes a demon because of their incorrect assumption. Once transformed, this strength and weakness relationship of her power remains. Feeding on boys maintains her attractiveness, but if she doesn't feed, she she decays. The yellow shirt she wears after the fire and her assault is telling for multiple reasons. Yellow is an attention-grabbing and confident color. After feeding on a Met, Jennifer feels renewed and is enjoying her newfound power. She's also more self-centered. Most importantly, yellow is a happy color. This is the day after an incredibly tragic fire and several deaths, including Jennifer's ex. Everyone else is grieving, but Jennifer is thriving. She's unempathetic about the loss of life and aggressive when Needy questions her attitude. These are the first signs that Jennifer has lost her humanity. Yellow is also hazardous. Jennifer stands out as she walks across the field to her next victim. She is literally a walking warning sign. Like the band, she wields her influence with malice. They exploited her crush. She exploits boys' lust. This shirt is a great detail because of how easily she can lure men to follow her, despite all of the obvious red flags. Jennifer asks Amet suspicious questions before leading him into the woods. Jonas gets freaked out by the animals but continues to let her feel him up. Colin walks straight into a creepy abandoned house that is clearly not where Jennifer lives. They all willingly put themselves in dangerous situations just because sleeping with Jennifer is so enticing. The more Jennifer kills, the more feminine and cutesier she becomes. While everyone else is mourning the loss of Jonas, her second kill, she appears totally unaffected. You can see most of the other students are in a sad gray. Jennifer stands out in a hot pink. She doesn't wear dark, sinister, murderous colors like you'd expect from a killer. The feminine pinks and hearts are associated with softness, tenderness, and love. This is her mindset after brutally murdering someone. It's the ultimate display of confidence, sexuality, and deceitful innocence. What makes her so terrifying is how joyful she is. This is another way Jennifer mirrors the band. The band exploits the fire for fame and greed. She exploits young men to sustain herself and beauty. In fact, she doesn't even see boys as human anymore, which she says in a deleted scene. You're killing people. No, I'm killing boys. In that same scene, she also says she doesn't view herself as a curse. She's happy because it makes her beautiful. Jennifer's obsession with looks is another one of her tragedies. Jennifer and those around her reduce her value to her beauty. Many of her conversations with Needy are about her looks. She wears skimpy outfits as she adores her body. She's constantly looking in the mirror. At the very end, she's watching a workout infomercial. Without her looks, Jennifer doesn't have a strong sense of self. Who would she be if she wasn't beautiful or if she couldn't seduce others. Jennifer's self-worth is reinforced by the men who desire her. No, not her her body. Nikolai doesn't consider the girl they are killing only the virgin body they are sacrificing for his own gain. Not one of these boys consider Jennifer as a person, just the sexy body she has. When Needy stabs her, we learn Jennifer has come to view herself as the sexual object that men do. Needy, her only true friend, is the one person that sees her as a human. This constant focus on Jennifer's body has resulted in Jennifer's low self-esteem. Jennifer has no choice but to think of herself as a prize, and she dresses to look like one. She doesn't necessarily dress for herself. If Jennifer doesn't feed for a considerable amount of time, she disintegrates. Both times she's hungry, she's in comfortable clothing and dull colors. The purple brings out the shadows in her face, making her look more sick. Also notable, these outfits are less revealing. It reflects how her power is depleting. At the end, Jennifer comments how empty she feels. Yes, she's 
hungry, but I also think this is a reference to her literally feeling dead inside. Jennifer becomes so unimpressed by boys and her power to easily seduce them that she decides to fill the void by taking away boys that Needy likes. It's a twisted way of escalating her power from controlling boys to controlling her best friend. In fact, Jennifer also uses clothing to exert control over Needy via rules. Needy isn't allowed to upstage her, nor is she allowed to show cleavage. That's reserved for Jennifer. Jennifer wants to feel powerful, and we know Jennifer thinks her most powerful weapon is her chest. For Jennifer to stake a claim on a certain image is manipulative and a way to demonstrate power. Jennifer has the freedom, Needy has to submit. This gives Jennifer an ego boost since she's guaranteed to look the best. We see this reflected in their clothing choices throughout the movie. Jennifer in low-cut fashionable clothing and Needy in less trendy covered up options. It's only when Needy is with her boyfriend Chip and away from Jennifer that she is free to wear a skimpier tank top. Aside from these rules, Needy and Jennifer's bond is also reflected in the colors they wear. When they're together, they're in similar hues. However, Jennifer's shades are more aggressive and attention-grabbing, whereas Needy is soft and unassuming. Even as kids, Jennifer is in a confident red and needy in a humble green. Jennifer's low-cut tops also conveniently frame her BFF necklace with needy. You'll notice that Jennifer is constantly playing with this necklace. It reflects her overt possessiveness over needy. Needy's necklace, however, is almost always hidden, and we never see her touching it other than to show her boyfriend. This friendship is toxic. Jennifer plays the controlling dictator and Needy the willing servant. Jennifer guilt trips Needy without remorse. She vents to her without appreciating Needy's genuine concern. She makes Needy be the less desirable doll when they're kids. The only reason these two work as friends is because of their predispositions for wanting power and wanting direction. Needy is actually a nickname for Anita, and this reflects her codependency on Jennifer. Needy is needy for Jennifer. Needy constantly gives in to please her until she realizes her own power and we'll touch on that later. When Jennifer makes out with Needy, she's wearing Needy's t-shirt. It's a way for her to feel connected to her, but it's also possessive. She doesn't ask to wear it, just assumes she can. She also came to Needy's house in pants, but intentionally took them off to seduce her. So this scene can be interpreted in a few ways. When I first saw this movie and what I sort of take away from it is that Jennifer is so tired of boys. She's so scarred by them, and she's annoyed that they don't live up to her expectations. They've consistently failed them, and then some. But she is attracted to guys. After all, she's so infatuated by Low Shoulder in the beginning and so dismissive of Needy, who's obviously infatuated with Jennifer. I think Jennifer knows Needy likes her romantically, but she likes to toy with her emotions to feel power. And so that's what she's doing here with this whole making out scene. Ensuring Needy is on her side by giving her something that Needy wants. It's also possible that Jennifer is bi and has repressed feelings for Needy. I've also heard that Megan Fox interpreted Jennifer as if she was a lesbian, and I know many others have interpreted this scene that way too. Honestly, I don't think there's a right answer. They are pretty flirty in the beginning. They have this intertwined psychic connection. Really, it could go both ways, so I would love to know what your interpretation is. Regardless of Jennifer's romantic feelings, what is more certain is her jealousy and insecurity. For the spring formal, Jennifer is in a white and black gown. The white is meant to show she's trying to look innocent and unassuming. It's also not a sexy silhouette, but it is ghostly. And the lace is supposed to hint at her dark intentions and fears underneath. The white also practically shows the gore of feeding on Chip so that the final feast is truly horrifying. When she's manipulating Chip, she asks him to say she's better than needy. And this right here confirms her insecurity. Jennifer is just jealous of the close relationships Needy has. She needs Needy's boyfriend to validate her. When Chip doesn't kiss Jennifer, she takes this as an insult, and then she kills him. Jennifer ties her self-worth to the power she wields. She must be desired, needed, and worshipped socially to be fulfilled. Her greatest fear is irrelevancy. Jennifer was the snowflake queen two years ago. Perhaps she's clinging to the past with this white snowy dress she has on, but she's become increasingly worried about about her looks and a desire to stay thin, Chip not validating his lust for her validates 
her fear. Needy is her last source of meaningful attention. By picking off boys that Needy is close with, she'll have no choice but to only focus on Jennifer. But when Needy ends their friendship, symbolized by ripping off her necklace, Jennifer has nothing to fight for, so she gives up and is destroyed. Throughout this movie, Jennifer represents a couple dichotomies, if you will. One is her sexiness and innocence. When she goes to the Melody Lane bar, we're constantly reminded of how sexy she looks and how young she is. Jennifer's top and mini skirt are revealing, but her white puffer jacket and love belt have a youthful innocence. She gets drinks, but she's underage. She coolly teases boys, but is overly excited with Nikolai. White is an innocent color. Jennifer's shock from the fire and her trust in the band is taken advantage of. When she's in the van, she looks incredibly vulnerable. She might have seemed powerful a few minutes ago, but she was completely powerless against genuine evil. This scene of her sacrifice is heartbreaking. White is also a pure, virginal color, and it almost makes her look like a sacrificial lamb. When she arrives at Needy's house after, you can actually see the feathers from her jacket falling out. The costume designer said that this was supposed to make her look like a plucked chicken. It's a brutal reminder of her horrible attack, trauma, and dehumanization that she's recently faced. The second dichotomy of Jennifer is she is both a victim and a monster. This jacket is white and innocent, but it's also the best color to show gore. You can clearly see the visual decline from girl to demon. Even though Jennifer brutally murders several innocent boys and she isn't a good friend, her story is still tragic. When Needy kills her and her mom opens the door, this is like one of the saddest scenes I feel like in this movie because it's such a wake-up call. You honestly forget that Jennifer even has a mom. Her room is decorated in a very teenage girl way, we see the blood-covered flag team magazine, a callback to the beginning. So it signals to us that after all that's happened, she's still so young and has lost so much. Jennifer may be controlling and vain, but she in no way deserves what happens to her. I think Jennifer is such a complex character. Her story is about trauma, control, and the value of beauty. And I think the costumes do such a great job of amplifying those themes so that we visually understand understand what's happening to her. And to make us question how much and what kind of focus is on Jennifer's body at a given time in the story. Needy is submissive, but intelligent and kind. She finds power by ending her toxic friendship with Jennifer, but is admitted to an asylum because of murder. Needy's style is comfortable, sensible, and casual. Most of her outfits reflect her good-natured spirit, dorkiness, and practicality in contrast to Jennifer. I've already sort of discussed the differences between them, so I won't go through her as much in depth as I did with Jennifer, but I do want to highlight a few key outfits. Needy is introduced as an inmate at a mental facility. The the orange jumpsuit tells us she's done something bad. What's notable about this outfit though is her bunny slippers. Yes, they are quirky, but they also represent her childish innocence. Needy is just a teenager who is being unfairly punished for saving the town from a serial killer monster. She's a victim just like Jennifer. Since she has a distant mom and her boyfriend doesn't believe her, Needy is forced to become highly independent to stop Jennifer. Needy's puffy, excessive prom dress is an exaggerated contrast to Jennifer's ethereal, simple look. The 80s style is dated and nostalgic. Needy is someone who holds on to the past and isn't concerned with the latest trends like Jennifer. But this is also the first time Needy's outfit demands attention and takes up space. The soft-spoken, shy, and subservient girl is now the most powerful. This dress also is supposed to look ugly and unattractive. It did actually say that in the script because as Chip is dying, he says that she looks really hot. And this is supposed to emphasize that his love for Needy goes far beyond beauty, which is ultimately worth more than pure lust like with Jennifer. It's Needy's genuine love for Jennifer, not Jennifer's body, that gives her the power to defeat her. At the end, Needy is in a black 
criminal looking hoodie. It's a sign of power and independence. After leaving a toxic relationship, she's stronger, more confident, and a fighter. She's literally gained some of Jennifer's powers. She gets revenge for her boyfriend and for Jennifer. She's empowered by her self-belief, something that Jennifer never had and was robbed from. I think both of these female characters are so great because they're strong in opposite ways. I think the true horror of Jennifer's body isn't the gore. It's the horror of trauma, losing a friend, and losing yourself without knowing it. And I think the costumes do such a good job of showcasing the different journeys of both girls. Also, I did want to mention this girly font. I'm so sad that they took away this girly cursive title font for the posters because I think this works so much better for the story. I think I will be doing one more Halloween-y video next, so subscribe for that. I hope you have a safe night. Don't get cursed on me. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.